Hey guys, it's Jerry. Welcome to another Zomo Romo video. Uh, tonight, I'm going to look at Vipers Antivirus Premium. Um, I have downloaded and installed a trial version. I registered for a 30-day license. Uh, the install was pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, look, something that was a little bit different is Viper gives you a 15-day trial uh, out of the box, but if you register and you give them your email address, they will in turn give you a 30-day license, which is a little bit different than other uh, antivirus companies that just automatically give you a 30-day trial. Uh, anyway, so I downloaded it, I updated it, Everything is um, pretty much set up. This is their newest um, antivirus premium interface that you're looking at. Uh, it's version 4.0.3904. Uh, just now updated, um, well, I don't know, five minutes ago, updated the definitions. This is their engine version, 3.9.2442.2. And uh, I have a trial mode and expires in 31 days. So, um, again, this is the interface. Now, I did get a request, uh, actually a couple of requests, to take a look at Viper. So, um, it, you know, I figured I would go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so, um, Anyway, so they, their premium package has um, active protection, which is enabled. It does have a HIPS uh, module built into it. Uh, it has email protection. It has a firewall that tells you um, how many intrusions were blocked. Um, I did an initial scan, which found uh, a bunch of cookies, of course. Uh, I also have uh, a couple of cracks that I intentionally installed, and it did, it did find that, so uh, that, that was pretty good. So I did a quick scan. Uh, I, like I said, I did the update. Here it gives you a threat level. Uh, right now it's elevated, which is increased levels of threats reported. So that's kind of a neat little thing that it tells you what... Uh, the threat level is. I mean, it's kind of standard for more and more antivirus programs nowadays, but uh, it's good that they have that here as well. So this is your overview. If we click on scan, you can do a quick scan. You could do a deep system scan, which carefully uh, checks for all files on your computer. You can do a custom scan, and you can kind of choose what you want to scan. If you want to scan your registry, your cookies, uh, drivers uh, and running processes. So um, again, pretty standard for today's antivirus programs. You have your firewall with with the settings, your statistics, your connections, and your history. So if we view settings for the firewall, this is their main settings um, box so window. But uh, I went ahead and enabled firewall. I uh, checked this box to enable Intrusion Detection System, or the I, their IDS. I also <clears throat> came down here and uh, I checked Enable Host Intrusion Prevention, or their HIPS module. Uh, and I set it to Allow with Notify. Um, so if it detects something that's... Uh, questionable, it will uh, notify me and then it's up to me to decide if I want to uh, go ahead and, and go in and block it or, or you know, um, so it kind of, it's for advanced users it says here, but um, you know, and, and you can also create your exception rules and so on. So that's pretty, uh, it's pretty good that you can kind of tweak the firewall and the way that they set it up, it's pretty simple, um, which is good. All right. We'll come back to the settings and take a look at that. But here's your stats for the firewall. It tells you um, what's blocked by the web filter, what's blocked by rules, 
uh, code injections blocked, which is already three. So it kind of gives you stats for the last hour, the last day, the last week, and month. You can reset everything. So it kind of gives you um, a report of everything that's going on with the firewall. Here you can view your connections, uh, which I really don't understand, but uh, I guess uh, it kind of tra tracks and monitors all of the inbound and outbound connections. Uh, and your firewall history. So again, anything that's coming in or going out, what their IP address is, the port uh, number, uh, all this good stuff that it, uh, it lists for you and what action it took. So as you can see, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff that it's already blocked. So it kinda, it's kind of scary, you know, of all the uh, all the things that are coming into your computer without you even knowing. So it's always good to have a uh, have a firewall. Um, all right, so that's your firewall. Then you can look at your history and see uh, what you've done as far as the as scans and, and so on. Um, you can look at your quarantine list. Anything that you that you've quarantined. Obviously, there's nothing here. Because uh, I just installed it. Here's your items that you've blocked and items that you've allowed. Uh, and your scheduled stands, scans. So, um, so it's right now set up by default to deep scan at 1 o'clock in, in the morning every day. So you can kind of select it. You can uh, enable, disable. You can delete it. You can edit it. You can add another one. Um, so again, pretty straightforward. And then you have your tools, which you have a file eraser, uh, which you can permanently delete files. You can look at your history and select when you do a clean, a system clean, what you want to uh, clean and what you want to uncheck so it doesn't... Um, hit that file that or that application when it goes to clean it. So you either leave everything checked or you you uncheck. Let's say you don't want Viper to clean anything out of Microsoft Office. So you can kind of click here what you want to uncheck so it doesn't remove any, any kind of history or uh, files that it's open from Microsoft Office. Uh, one thing they should do is uh, add uh, Office 2010 because I know a lot of people, including myself, already have Office 2010, so uh, they need to kind of add that. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and look at the settings. Uh, here you have your updates. You can you can check for updates. You can refresh your definitions. You can uh, allow automatic internet access and set up a proxy. You can enable automatic updates. It's right now set up for every hour to uh, check for updates. And you can join the ThreatNet community to um, help Viper with sending them um, security risks that you might uh, find on your system. Then uh, <clears throat> you have your scan options. This I found to be pretty cool because you can customize on a quick scan what you want Viper to look at on a deep scan and then on a custom scan. Or you can restore your defaults. Uh, you can check to include low-risk low programs and USB drives on insertion. So when you put in a USB stick, it'll uh, automatically check it. Make sure there's, no, there's nothing malicious on it. Uh, you have your active protection that you can enable or disable. Obviously, you want to keep that enabled. Uh, you can notify when known risks are blocked in quarantine and check files when they're opened or copied. And uh, you can customize the extensions to uh, look at, for Viper to look at. So everything's checked by default, <coughs> excuse me, which is good. 
and uh, you can handle unknown programs. Um, you can allow unknown programs. Um, it's recommended because you can always go in and uh, check to see what, or you can have Viper uh, notify you when something is unknown. So this way uh, you can cut back on false positives. Um, email protection, you can enable or disable email protection and then just choose what you have, either Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Windows Mail, or Outlook Express. Um, you can enable anti-phishing and you can um, customize your notations. Uh, power, <clears throat> you can wake from a, uh, a sleep on scheduled scans. So if your computer is in sleep mode and it, uh, it comes up to your scheduled scan, it will automatically wake the system and start doing a scan for you. And your firewall, um, again, we already looked at this, but this is your settings for the firewall. So there's not a lot of uh, detailed settings. Um, Viper has set this up so, you know, any really almost anyone can tweak it and uh, set it up the way that they, they want and it's not overwhelming or, or um, confusing. So it's, um, it's uh, you know, again, pretty straightforward. So <clears throat> um, one thing I wanted to show you, actually I forgot to show you this. This is your PC Explorer. Um, now the really cool thing is it tells you what's safe, what's unknown, what's suspicious and what's uh, hazardous on your system. So if you drop this down and you look at downloaded ActiveX, it tells you if there's anything running and what their status is. Is your internet applications. And it tells you what's running uh, and what's safe or what might not be that what might not be safe or suspicious is your running processes on the system or processes however you want to call it so everything that's running and uh, if it's unknown it'll give you a question mark um, and then you can allow it and, or if it's if it's unknown or maybe suspicious you can uh, look on Google to uh, find out if that's um, malicious, uh, maybe check check on um, virus total and, uh, and see, uh, again, if anything suspicious or unknown, what it is and if it should be on your system. Anything that's uh, highlighted with a check mark, it's safe, so you kind of know what's safe on your system, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have your startup programs. And again, tells you what's starting up automatically and what's safe or not safe or suspicious. Your uh, BHOs, if you have any running. Your host files. Obviously, those are safe. Your LSPs. Um, looks like everything is safe there. And uh, last but not, not never least, your shell ex uh, execute hooks. Um, this is a, my, my super and spyware that it knows it's safe. So uh, again, just a quick look at Viper's um, antivirus premium. Um, I really like the way that they've set this up. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to use, user friendly. Um, I like the way that really it's set up and you don't really get lost deep into you know, this never-ending, um, you know, cycle of pop-ups and, and buttons that you can press to modify your antivirus. So uh, this is a quick look. Uh, now I'm going to do a second video and do a prevention test as I usually do, but um, there you go. There's your Viper Antivirus Premium. Um, as you can see, it's just uh, real-time monitoring the system right now given uh, a report here so uh, it's pretty good pretty good so on the next video we'll take a look at the, uh, how well it prevents things from coming in so hope you enjoyed it and i'll be back with part two